Hey everyone, before we get started, uh, we just wanted to mention that we were uh, invited to be part of a really cool uh, video interview with Ken over at Sledgehammer Horror for his My First Horror Movie series. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about uh, the first experiences Joseph and I both had as children with horror films, uh, please check it out. Uh, the link is posted below. Thanks. That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Alone, the latest film directed by John Hyams, which will be released courtesy of Magnet releasing September 18th, 2020 on digital and demand, and I'm sure in various theatrical venues that are open throughout the country, they are. I enjoyed this film. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, a nice surprise. Yeah. Okay, the basic story. The film is broken up into four chapters. The road, the river, the rain. No. Yeah. The rain? Yeah, there's one There's I wrote it down. There's one... I wrote it down too. What the road, the river, the night, the clearing. I wrote down the rain. It's the night. Because you got up when it said the night. Oh, did I? Yes. I guess that's fine. <laughs> the road, the river, the night, the clearing. Anyway, so this movie is about a woman named Jessica. Yeah, played by Jules Wilcox. Uh, she's in the Pacific Northwest... The license plates we see say Oregon. Yeah. So I'm assuming she's in the Oregon. But she is in her Volvo station wagon with a U-Haul trailer attached to it, and she's on the move. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears initially that she's separated from her significant other. Mm -hmm. So she's moving. And as she is driving through like the windy, because it's kind of like a scenic route she's taking, she's driving through the windy mountains. She comes upon a black Jeep Grand Cherokee driving very slowly. So she attempts to pass it. And as she's doing so, the Jeep speeds up so she cannot get over. And she's almost hit by a semi. Mm -hmm. After she does pass him, he starts flashing her trying to like get her out of the way. So she panics. And right as like we think something's going to happen, this Jeep exits the road. So she stops at a gas station, mm -hmm. and this Jeep pulls up. And he taps on her window and says, hey, sorry about that. I didn't know you were behind me. I was distracted. I was on the phone. The reason I was flashing you is because the call I had uh, required me to like get somewhere very quickly. Mm -hmm. So sorry about it. And then he's kind of asking her her name and like where she's going. Very yeah. awkward. All kinds of red flags there. The yeah. man is played by... Mark Menchaka who I know from Ozark and The Outsider. Correct. So I, I think I like him. Mm -hmm. Like, he's an interesting um, actor. And in this role, he does seem very creepy. Yeah. He's... Like, he does a good job. Mm -hmm. But, um, so she continues on her way when she comes upon a car sort of blocking this two-lane road. And, of course, it's the Jeep. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to get help, asking her if she will let him ride with her to go, like, get gas or something. Mm -hmm. So she's like, soft pass. Like, she, she goes, I got a meeting, bye. Yeah, like, bye-bye, uh, speeds off. So later that evening, we see her at a rest stop. Mm -hmm. She's outside the car smoking. The audience sees the Jeep pull up. She doesn't. She goes back to her car, and as she's attempting to pull off, he stops her mm -hmm. and tries to, like, explain something to her. She freaks out and pulls off. But then before she can get out of the rest area there's like a van blocking her way which gives the man ample time to run up to her car and he mm -hmm. starts yelling at her like what's your problem you almost hit me mm -hmm. and she's freaked out the van moves she speeds off so she starts going down the road and loses control of the car so the car sort of like settles into the shoulder she gets out and sees that her tire's been slashed so obviously the man walked up to her car and slashed her tire so, of course, this Jeep pulls up behind her car. He gets out, like, breaks her window, gets in the car, assaults her, and then kidnaps her. Mm -hmm. So, cut to her in, like, a basement with him telling her to take off her clothes. He hits her. They exchange dialogue, and that's when we learn that her husband is dead. He committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I Also, along the way, the... The little exposition we get about her uh, relates to, she, she first has on the phone with her father, They were her parents were supposed to help her pack up to move, and 
she's basically just, I, I didn't want to deal with mom. She has all this animosity towards her mother. Her mother keeps calling. She won't pick up the phone. Um, so things aren't going well for Jessica. Mm -hmm. But we cut to her waking up in that same basement the next morning. Mm -hmm. And she attempts to get out. And the door to the basement has one of those old-timey locks with, like, a old-timey skeleton key. She's able to find a nail, like, that's embedded into the wall, pull it out, knock out the key, open the door. She almost escapes the house when the man pulls up. So she freaks out and, like, jumps into a closet. And she sees through the closet, like, a crack in the door that he's, like, sitting down at the kitchen table, about to eat apple with cheese when his phone rings and he's talking to his wife, telling her that it appears that he has told his wife he's like on a business trip in California or some somewhere far further away and uh, <clears throat> everything's just going fine. So that seems very good. It builds a lot of tension because we're thinking, is she gonna jump out of this closet and assault him while he's on the phone? What is she going to do? Ultimately, she waits until he leaves the room and she attempts to like flee the house and mm -hmm. she does. Mm -hmm. But he hears her, he chases her, she's running through the woods, she ends up falling and like getting a pretty big branch like embedded into her foot, she has to pull that out. She makes it all the way down to the river when he like catches up to her and she makes the decision to jump into the rapids. It carries her away, cut to her waking up washed up on shore. Mm -hmm. uh, she's trying to find help or run away when she hears someone walking towards her. So she has a big branch, and she assaults the person, who turns out to be just a guy hunting. Robert, played by Anthony Heald. Poor who, Robert. Who is always instantly recognizable as the doctor that terrorizes Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so she assaults him. When she hits him in the chest, she breaks his phone, <laughs> of course. So she does convince him she's been kidnapped and assaulted. She needs help. They get in his car, start driving, but they reach a dead end because a tree has fallen in the road and the Jeep catches up. Mm -hmm. So there's another really good scene where it's like the man saying that, oh, that's my sister. She's crazy. I need to get her back home. And then Jessica saying, I don't know this man. He kidnapped me. You need to get help. <clears throat> and the poor man, Robert, like with his gun, like, I don't know what to do. Ultimately, Jessica convinces him to tell the man if, if you're not lying, give him your phone and let him call the police. Mm -hmm. So the man's like, sure, I'm, is about to give Robert his phone, but he assaults him and then shoots and kills him. Mm -hmm. That gives Jessica time to run off. He does end up shooting Jessica. He thinks he shot her like worse than he did. I think he just like grazed her shoulder, but she ends up like hiding in the woods. There's another really good scene where he's sort of antagonizing her to come out of the, out of hiding, but she doesn't, she spends the night. The next morning, she uh, starts to uh, try to continue to walk away when the Jeep pulls up and he's out there trying to dig a grave to bury Robert mm -hmm. and presumably find her body. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what I thought, that was also another really tense scene, she decides to like sneak into the Jeep mm -hmm. thinking that the key is still in the ignition for some reason, but it's not. She does find his phone but as she is like fiddling with his phone, the man walks back. So she jumps in the back seat of the Jeep. He drives off. He realizes his phone is gone. He panics. Well, meanwhile, she's called 911 and is whispering. <laughs> meanwhile, she's been in the back calling 911, sort of whispering. Same and, track this call. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he, sense, he knows the phone is gone. It appears that maybe he thinks she might be in the car. So the car stopped. No, he takes off. She has like a tire iron, assaults him, which causes him to crash and flip the Jeep. Mm -hmm. She's able to get out. He's pretty badly hurt, so she's able to get pretty far with his phone. She ends up calling this man's wife, trying to tell him, like, this man's out here killing bitches, and, you know, like, you need to know this. She's like, say hi to your wife. When he approaches, and she puts him on speakerphone, mm -hmm. like, say, or she puts the wife on speakerphone, like, say hi to your, your wife, he does acknowledge he's there, but he says, like, oh, I have to take care of something, and, like, hangs up. So they get into a fight. She ultimately prevails and kills the man, and then the heli the rescue helicopter shows up. The end. All right. So what do you want to say? 
Um, the title, the, I was thinking as we were um, discussing it beforehand, there's an old Joan Crawford movie called Female on the Beach. Okay. And Jeff Chandler lets himself into her beach house and makes coffee and she wakes up and discovers him there and he's like, how do you like your coffee? And she goes, alone. <laughs> that's what she <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so it was directed by John Hyams, who is the son of Peter Hyams, who uh, in the 80s and 90s was a major Hollywood director. Uh, we just recently re rewatched a couple of Peter Hyams films, The Relic and Time Cop. Oh, that's right. With JCVD. Uh, and John Hyams actually has directed the last two installments of the Universal Soldier film series. Okay. Of course, uh, featuring Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, done a lot of television. Uh, wasn't somebody that was really on my radar. Uh, but this was a, a very pleasant surprise. I'm not familiar with Jules Wilcox, who's in a, I think it's a Netflix television series. That's called, Jessica. Yeah, okay. called Bloodline. But uh, I thought she did a great performance, even though she looked like uh, fresh-faced Katie Holmes to me. Which I know I kept commenting on as we were watching it. Yeah, you seem very bothered by that. Not bothered. It's just Katie like, Holmes is a victim. Okay. Tom Cruise <laughs> Tom Cruise kidnapped her. <laughs> that that's true, and she was left all alone. Um but she gives a really great performance, I thought. And it's a very simplistic story. Uh so there's not a a large number of things you can do with it, but it it's tense uh, and anxiety laden and uh yeah. I don't have any notes, uh, except oh. that I thought the pacing was excellent. It's a very simple, sort of basic movie, but very effective. It's also you know, based on a 2011 Swedish film uh, called Gone, uh, which was directed and written by Matthias Olsen, who served as the screenwriter this time around. Okay. Um, which maybe had helped with the fam familiarity of it. My only gripe would be the actions or the sort of the action sequences in the car like the driving of that like her in her car i thought the sound and editing was a little off sure like the sound of the engine or the brakes so the didn't really match the motion of the car which sort of made me feel like you know it's showing that it's sort of a lower budget film perhaps but that's really it otherwise i was thoroughly engaged i it is suspenseful yeah i i, I think i also really like mark Menchaca. uh he, who's usually playing somebody that's kind of white trash or, I'm into or it. rough around the edges. I'm into it. Uh, yeah, he's very good at that. Uh, yeah. But but also not somebody that I see as typecast, per se, based on the three things I've seen him in. Yeah. Uh, what would you give this film? I think three out of five is fair. I think I want to give it three and a half out of five. Oh, that's not what you were saying. Really. I know, but as I was talking about it, I realized I really did like this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's it's very effective. It's one of those things like, oh, I've seen this film before, and in many ways you have, but it's still compelling. I would give it three and a half because I would pay to see it. Okay. Or had I paid to see it, I would not be disappointed. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.